Hello everybody, welcome back. So I know I said we were about to start uh, Bounties 3 in the last episode, but I found out Charlie actually has some quests that we can do. I did still go ahead and install Bounties 3. I also installed the High uh, Desert as well, just uh, so we have that ready to do. Yes. Um, so yeah, we get a, let's see, questions. For what purpose? Very well. Proceed. Um, any interesting stories? I don't talk about completed contracts. I'm paid for silence, not just killing. Well, any botched job, something go wrong in a humorous way, accidentally shot an innocent? No, I've never catastrophically failed a job. Even if I did, I still don't talk about previous contracts, as I've said. Any assassin worth the title doesn't accidentally kill anyone. They kill who they mean to kill. No more, no less. I'm much the same. As for innocence, if you even believe in the concept, it isn't my place to make ethical judgments on my targets. But I've certainly killed my fair share of people that common society would deem innocent and worthy of protection. You know that cliché about the tortured assassin with a heart of gold, with strict rules of honor, never killing women or children? Oh, Leon. That isn't me. I've killed women, children, the unarmed, and the defenseless. A target is a target. I don't care about the rest. And no, I've never felt one iota of guilt for any of it. I don't really feel anything at all, in any context. I'm rather cold-blooded. So you're not Leon the Professional. <laughs> that would actually be pretty cool if we could get a, a Leon outfit. Do you need something? You. Um, uh, more questions. For what purpose? Very well. Proceed. I want your quest. Uh, goals? My goal is to kill anyone that may wish to kill you, up until the terms of my contract end. That's it. I'm not haunted by some lingering threads of the past that I've yet to tie up, or anything to that effect. I have a handful of low-priority side jobs at the moment that I figured I would deal with during any breaks where I'm not shadowing you. Side jobs? Sounds like quests. Sure. I don't see why not. I can split the commission with you for each target. That's fair enough, certainly. I'll need to be present when you kill the targets, mind you. While I'm aware you're an experienced killer, they are still my contracts. The details are in my safe house. As my clients told me, there's no rush. I wouldn't be bothered if we didn't get around to any of these. All right. Wet work. Oh, and there we go. Uh, with with the Mojave Wasteland now purged of its most dangerous elements, rumors about abound of a mysterious newcomer seeking out the now famous courier. While many of the accounts vary, they all share a common message delivered by the traveler. Tell Cannonball Taylor to go where it all began. Recalling your past deeds as a bounty hunter, you soon realize it can only mean one place, Randall and Associates. Perhaps you should seek out this stranger and ascertain his motives. New Vegas Bounties 3 is recommended for veteran couriers, level 35 plus. City of Woe. Uh, Charlie, is your door like... How do you... How do you... Um, oh. It's the only issue I've kind of noticed consistently with some of the Overseer mods. Uh, the... Um, a couple of the doors... Uh, just when you go up to them, they don't really... You have to stand at a weird angle. Um, target name, Freddie O'Reilly. Location, Harper Shack. This target should be simple enough. Apparently, he's totally alone. Oh, okay. Harper's Shack. Did you give me a quest mark for that? Oh, you did. Good. Oh, right. he's right next to, um, Death. Nice. Um... Okay, we'll go here. Alright. Um, yeah, every time I 
I close my game out, my ammo resets. We have Charlie, someone else might actually kill him over here. Are you kill him? Uh, Legion? Also, have we ever been that, uh, thing? Mercy. I've got you now. Fine work. Thanks. Read the next contract. What's the next one? Oh, do I have to go back to here? Okay. Um, while we're here, though, let's just check out that rail system. Apparently we haven't been over here. Viper's Lair. In my sights. Hey! Kill them all. I think we can turn this off. Don't get distracted. Damn, it's like she knows I was looking at fucking inventories. Hey! Oh, what? No. Drop that. I've got you now. In my you were, sights. You were about to fucking shoot this, weren't you? You can scream if you like. It won't make any difference. Be getting desperate. In my sights. Hey! Come on! Vex's diary. Ooh. 
the roach is uh discs and hollow tapes. I feel like I've said this before, but I wish you could actually like play Roach's music. Or if like the underground actually had a radio station that just played it. And then as you collect like his lost holotapes, uh, it adds to the playlist. That'd be pretty cool. diary in a sec once we uh, check all the rooms this ammo box have like a very hard lock. Okay. Slight. Nope. There we go. Three missiles. Yep. Um, Sure. <laughs> You've acquired what is left of a pre-war military device that controls an automated missile silo. Once you upload the coordinates and activate it, a devastating missile salvo will rain down from the sky. Very nice. Vipers, and this is what I have to show for it. A shitty train tunnel filled with bumbling oafs. I want my spot on the strip, damn it. As a money making venture, this was doomed from the start. Traveling merchants are wise to our tricks and never have a large amount of caps on them. 
after dividing what we do get, even by my system, I only end up with enough caps to buy a couple of drinks and freeside. The men around here are really dull, and for the most part, dumber than a bag of wet socks. Trevor spends all his time making missiles. I have no idea why we never get to use any. What's the point of blowing up all the loot? We only have one launcher, so it's not like we're going to take out the whole NCR. Yeah, and that fucking idiot was trying to shoot that thing indoors. Target name, Tug Shilson. Location, Nipton Ruins. I was told this one killed the last assassin to come after him. He won't fare so well this time. Cool. Nipton. In my sights. Hey! You like that? Mission accomplished. Uh. Time to get paid. Uh. Yeah, about that pay. How are we, like, getting paid? Like, you don't submit these. Like, do you have, like, dead drops for the money or something? Is it want me to go this way? Damn it. Why couldn't you just have a mailbox outside, Charlie? <laughs> Tony D'Angelo. Cerulean Robotics. Oh, that's this actually target should be soft enough. But he'll likely be accompanied by some of his Kim addict clientele. This one's actually nearby. Cerulean Robotics. This will get bloody. you got. Meet at Cerulean. Tony, meet me and the boys at that Cerulean robot, robot factory in Freeside. Bring some quality chems, because I want to party tonight. Don't worry about Nino's fucking territory bullshit. I stuck a gun in his mouth and got him to swear not to interfere. He knows we're serious business. He won't be dumb enough and try to stop us. If he does, hey, we throw him off the roof of the fucking building. Chester. Alright. 
So I also know uh, uh, in the last episode I said I was going to take Russell and Doc Friday uh, with us. Um, I actually can't. You're not supposed to bring companions for uh, Bounties 3. About a highway patrol station. A lieutenant in the Jackals. Shocking that a member of that worthless gang even managed to earn a price on his head. Yeah. Alright, I think we'll do just this one, and then if this isn't the end of it, we'll save the rest for later. Although we're already at 10 minutes, or 20 minutes, so I guess... Maybe we should just finish these up. Good kill. Be bothering. Kill them all. Is that all? Billy Bloom, Bison Steve Hotel. Ooh. Time okay. To work. I hope. Hmm. I hope he's outside the hotel and not in it. Because if he's in it, it might be an issue with the uh, the whole uh, hotel mod we have. We'll, we'll see. some console commands here because I don't think uh... well, I guess the second floor is still technically intact Well done. We might have a bit of an issue here. Oh. Ah. Okay. That, that's cool. I didn't realize that was a thing. 
That lets you uh, toggle. Hey. The original Bison Steve. That's actually pretty awesome. They killed her. They. Job's done. We Lost. should probably leave before the sheriff takes objection to assassins operating in his jurisdiction. That's actually pretty cool. We'll, uh... <laughs> oh yeah, let's read this note. Thoughts. Looking for work as a merc may not be bad. I think I'm equipped. Fucking Valdez piece of shit ran me out of Reno, so I wouldn't really it wouldn't really surprise me if he sent goons after me. I know there's some issues with road blockages around the Mojave outpost. Maybe that gets cleared up. I can take on some high profile road security work. Hell, this is just a pain in my ass. All over some money I didn't even steal. That lying prick. Had a good thing going in Reno. Just have to try my luck at getting something even better in Vegas. Isn't improving your future through outrageous f turns of good luck the whole point of the city? Guess we'll find out. Wasn't that very lucky for you? Don Scranton, Cap Counterfeiter Shack. This is shack. the final one of my side jobs. We'll be well equipped, but nothing beyond our abilities. Let's get to work. All right. Should be easy enough. Oh boy. You can scream if you like. It won't make any difference. I'll kill you all. Target silence. Hmm. Dead oh, man. shit. Fuck. Oh, he is armed. Had enough. Oh, you got a minigun? Fuck no. All right. <laughs> that was the last of my side contracts. I appreciate your assistance. Yeah, no problem. Do you need something? Um. On which topic? Let's see. You know, I've made a lot of enemies. I don't suppose he'd ever try to assassinate me for them. I think that paranoia is wise. If you spend the rest of your life looking over your shoulder, you're less likely to take a knife in the spine. True. But, unless you intend to turn on me, you have nothing to fear in that regard. I don't accept contracts on people that I know in any capacity. Even more important is that I'm already under contract to keep you alive. Hmm. Of course, I would say the same thing if I really were plotting to kill you when you least expect it. I suppose you'll never know. <laughs> uh, you don't really talk much. I suppose. Interpret it as you want. I just don't have much to say. We only have so much time on Earth. Less than we usually expect. I'd prefer not to waste it on idle chatter. Uh, how many men have you killed? When you say, 
men. Do you specifically mean adult males or just mankind in general? Because the latter number is far higher. As for specific numbers, I have no idea. Likely triple digits either way. I'm quite good at what I do, and my prices are very reasonable. Healing is my profession. I suppose I'm just not interested in making a sport of it. Keeping track of numbers and personal records. I think the pit boy does that for you. Uh, when you say you have no feelings, what exactly do you mean? I mean what I say. I have no feelings. My emotions are dead. I can experience some instinctual fear or frustration, but little more. Joy, rage, misery, lust. I have none of these things. It extends to physical sensations, too. I don't really feel pain or pleasure. Perhaps it's all a result of how broken my mind is. Or maybe it's actually acute nerve damage. I don't know. I don't particularly care. Um, don't seem to like bounty hunters much. Why is that? They're mediocre, deluded assassins. I don't extend the effort of actively disliking things, but I find their notion to be repellent. A proper assassin is an implement of death, nothing more. When men make the decision to kill, some use blades, others bullets, some use people. It isn't personal, and I harbor no illusions of morality. I kill for money. If you put stock into ethics, it's an inherently evil act. But bounty hunters, headhunters, whatever their name, have it backwards. It's all personal to them. Their client is an afterthought. All the focus is on the heroic bounty hunter, profiting off of death while crowing about justice. They're a flashy tool, used to make a point about the reach and the righteousness of their clientele. Um... I mean, I could care less about the moral implications. I'm just doing the job I was paid to do. At least that's how it started out, I guess. I've done my share of bounty hunting. I'm aware. Of your many apparent professions, you'll forgive me if there's at least one that I almost care enough to dislike. Fortunately, I don't really feel much about anything. If it makes you feel better, no doubt you could find some distasteful aspect of me as well. Probably involving dead children. That one never fails to offend someone. Yeah. What? I mean, we've all wanted to kill that crier in Freeside, so no worries. And I may have. Um, where'd you get the pit boy? Ready for an anticlimax. I purchased it at an exorbitant price. I read about their uses, and heard testament to how they were one of the few times vault Tech produced something that actually worked. I decided it would be a useful tool for my work. No doubt you agree, from personal experience. Um... So how many assassins are in Mojave? Because we've killed a few. Well, that depends on whether you believe the term actually has requirements before it can accurately apply to a person. There's no shortage of people who claim to be assassins. If you take them at their word, then the Mojave is flooded with the profession. And most of these sorts consider assassination to mean walking right up to their target and announcing their murderous intent. Then they die. In my eyes, they're nothing more than worthless thugs, not assassins. No matter how much they might crow otherwise. Actual professional killers who operate covertly and professionally are few and far between. So be it. Um. Yeah, let's just go through the rest of these. How much do you charge? Are you asking for personal reasons? I'm afraid I can't accept any contracts from you. Oh. I strongly prefer anonymity from my clients. Dead drops, encrypted communication, couriers. It's safer for them and for myself. But in general, I don't have a fixed price point. It depends on the target. 
Some random outlaw nobody. A couple hundred caps. High-ranking military personnel. At least a thousand. Likely more. President Kimball? A hundred thousand. Up front. Um... Hypothetically, how much would you charge to kill me? You have a remarkable talent for surviving attempts on your life. And it tends to go poorly for the prospective killers. Factoring personal risk, I'd require... At least 50,000. Possibly more, depending on other factors. Next time some amateur killer fails to execute you, search their body for the... death order they inevitably stuffed into their pocket. More likely than not, the payout being offered is laughably small. As if you needed further proof of how worthless an assassin they are. Hmm. Do you think you could kill President Kimball? Could I? Absolutely. Would I? Unlikely. The only ones I can think of with both the motive and the financial incentive would be the Legion. For a faction so enraptured by social Darwinism, they're rather infatuated with the notion that women are incapable of murder. Their loss. Ah, okay. As you say. Is there anything what? else, uh... On which... Uh, I don't get it. Why hire an assassin for bodyguard work? I'm excellent at killing people. The entity that hired me wants me to follow you and kill anyone who would wish to do you harm. None of your enemies scare me, and I'm being paid a very agreeable amount. Enough to retain my services over a long stretch of time. Somebody wants you alive, Courier. Should you feel honored or terrified? Um, that's a good point. <laughs> who hired you? If they haven't told you themselves, I'm not going to speculate on their identity or motives. I've worked for them before, and they've been reliable, as far as clients are concerned. That's all you need to know. Nothing personal. Discretion is part of my contract. Um, how do you choose clients? Well, first and foremost, I require half of my commission up front. If a prospective client can't manage that, then there's no deal. Beyond that, I'm not especially picky. Sometimes a client will be obviously untrustworthy, and I'll decline their contract for my own security. The most common reason for me to decline the job, though, is if I don't believe I could kill the target. A common example of this would be Kaisar. I've been asked to kill him more than once, but I've always refused. I see no way for a woman to get anywhere near Kaisar, except possibly through slavery. And slaves lack for both weapons and escape options. It isn't viable. And while I consider myself to be a consummate professional, I'm not so dedicated to my career that I'll kill myself in the attempt. However, if I accept a contract, it will be carried out. I won't be bribed, intimidated, coerced, or convinced. If I have a target, they will die. Alright. Well, that's enough for now. Very well. Um, Charlie, it's been nice working with you. I gotta handle some business, uh, some personal business I owe to an old friend. Um, I'm gonna have to ask you Do to you stay in Freeside for the time being. Are you certain? Yeah, just for now. Um, we'll, uh, come get you later, okay? If anyone recognizes the utility of solo ops, it's me. I'll be at my safe house in Freeside then. All right. Well, didn't get to start Bounties 3 in this episode, but I think now we have actually finished up everything for uh, Depths of Depravity. So next episode, Bounties 3, for sure. Uh, hope you all enjoyed. Y'all have a great night.